Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to solve an example from arithmetic progressions chapter and this question is taken from section C of CBSE board exam 2024 paper. If the sum of first m terms of an AP is same as sum of first n terms given that m is not equal to n then show that the sum of its first m plus n terms is 0. So let us understand the question first. They have said that if the sum of first m terms of an AP, so that means we have to make use of the sum of first m terms of an AP formula here, is same as sum of first n terms. So m is not equal to n they have given, so maybe m is 10 terms and n is 20 terms for example. So if the sum of m terms is equal to the sum of n terms, we have to show that sum of first m plus n terms is 0. So let us begin by writing the sum of first n terms of an AP formula. So the sum of first n terms of an AP formula is given as Sn is equal to n over 2 times 2a where a represents the first term of the series plus n minus 1 times d where d represents the common difference. Now here in the question they have given that sum of first m terms is same as sum of first n terms. So here we have written sum of first m terms is equal to sum of first n terms. Now making use of this formula, let us write the equation for Sm and Sn. So here for Sm we have made use of this formula and in place of n we have written m. So m over 2 times 2a plus m minus 1 times d. This is for Sm and for Sn we are going to write the same formula. Now here let us simplify this further. Now 2 from the denominator on the left hand side divides the 2 from the denominator on the right hand side. So we are left with the remaining terms that is on the left hand side we have m times 2a plus now expanding the brackets that is d multiplies with m giving us md and d multiplies with negative 1 giving us minus d is equal to on the right hand side n stays the same 2a plus we do the same thing that is expanding the brackets d multiplies with n giving us nd and d multiplies with negative 1 giving us negative d Next, let us expand the brackets again. That is on the left hand side we have multiplied m with 2a giving us 2am. m multiplies with plus md giving us m square d and m multiplies with negative d giving us negative md. Same thing we are going to do on the right hand side that is n multiplies with 2a giving us 2an. n multiplies with positive nd giving us plus n square d and n multiplies with negative d giving us negative nd. Now the next step is we are going to take all the terms which is having a common difference in them on the right hand side and all the terms which do not have the common difference on the left hand side. So here we have written 2am and taking 2an on the left hand side we get minus 2an and taking all the terms which has common difference from left hand side to right hand side we get n square d stays the same. Now plus m square d becomes minus m square d when it comes on this side and minus nd stays the same and minus md when it comes on this side becomes plus md. Now on the left hand side we can see that 2a is a common term. So we have taken it out as a common factor. So we can see that 2a is outside the bracket and inside the bracket remains m minus n. Now on the right hand side we are going to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. So in the first two terms we can see that d is a common factor so we have taken it out and in the bracket stays n square minus m square. Now from the last two terms we have taken minus d as a common factor again. So in the bracket stays n minus m. Now if we look at this term, this represents an algebraic identity which is a square minus b square is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So making use of this identity we are going to expand this term as. Now on the left hand side the term remains the same that is 2a m minus n is equal to d. Now n square minus m square becomes n minus m times n plus m minus d n minus m. Now if we look at this term we can take d n minus m and d n minus m as a common factor again. So here we have written 2 a m minus n the left hand side stays the same is equal to d n minus m is taken as a common factor out in the bracket. Now from the first term n plus m stays and from the second term 1 stays back. Now here if we look at the left hand side and the right hand side we have m minus n on the left hand side and n minus m on the right hand side. 
So to cancel these two terms, we have to make them as m minus n, m minus n or n minus m and n minus m. So for that we have used another step over here. So the left hand side remains the same as we can see 2a m minus n is equal to. Now from this n minus m we have taken negative outside. So it becomes negative d. Now the signs flip. m becomes positive and n becomes negative. So this is one step which you need to follow if you want to cancel the terms from both the sides. Now once we have done this, I can cancel out m minus n and m minus n from both the sides. So these two will divide each other. So we are left with over here. 2a stays the same. Now this entire term that is negative d n plus m minus 1, I am going to take it on the left hand side. So negative becomes positive. So it turns into positive n plus m minus 1 times d equal to 0. Now let us consider this as our equation 1. Now in the question they have asked us to prove that the sum of m plus n terms is going to be 0 if these two sums become same. So let us now write down the equation for sum of its first m plus n terms using this formula. So we have sum of first m plus n terms is s m plus n is equal to m plus n over 2 times 2a plus m plus n minus 1 times d. That is we have made use of sum of first n terms of an AP formula. So in place of n you have to just replace m plus n. Now if we look at this term that is 2a plus m plus n minus 1 times d. This is same as the term we have got over here that is equation 1. And the value of this equation is equal to 0. That means this entire bracket goes down to 0. So m plus n over 2 multiplies with 0 giving us 0. So m plus n over 2 times 0 when anything multiplied with 0 is 0. So we got the sum of first m plus n terms as 0. So we have shown that the sum of m plus n terms is going to be 0. I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. And if you found this video useful then you can click on these playlists where you will find more examples of these kind. And if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.